Luke 7, verse 12, read. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out. Yes. The only son of his mother. Yes. She was a widow. Mm -hmm. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. not. And he came and touched the bier. And they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto you, Arise. What was this young man? He was the what? Only, Only son of his mother. mother. Because she was what? She was a widow. She was a widow. A widow. And Jesus said to the boy, Arise. Arise. He woke up. He gave him to My his Lord. mother. Stop the funeral. He stopped the coffin. And he broke Stop. the cycle. Stop the procession. Ah. Somebody say, Stop the coffin. Stop the coffin. Break the cycle. Break the cycle. Go to Luke 11 and this is the last thing I will read for now. When a strong man, Luke 11 and 21. Luke 11. Luke 11 and 21. When a strong man right. um, keeping his palace. When a strong man um, keeping his palace. Keeping his palace. His goods. His goods are in peace. Read. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him he take it from him all his armor wherein he trusts and divided his spoil. Thank you. Matthew 13 and 25. Matthew 13 and 25. Matthew 13, 13 and 25. And 25. While men slept. But while men slept. His enemy, his enemy came, came and so tears among the wheat. Read. And went his way. And when the, ba when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, they appear the tears, they appear the tears also. Yes. Go on. Yes. So the servant of the household came and said unto him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in the field? Then from whence cometh he, cometh they that are tears? And he said unto him, An enemy had done this. An enemy has had done, done this. this. Close your Bibles tonight and tell the person on the side of you that an enemy, an enemy has done this. Has done this. An enemy, an enemy has done this. Be seated just for a few minutes tonight. Give God praises. Hallelujah. Give God praises. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. Jesus is moving in the assignment yes. that God called him to move in. Yes. And praise God, as he is moving in this assignment, amen, we call it his divine work, amen. Yes. His divine assignment, which means because he had come to earth to do something specific, to carry out. Praise God, his mission, his mandate, his purpose. Praise God. Understanding the mission and understanding that the time was short. Praise God. And that he could no longer, amen, hold back on what he was called to do. He pressed, persevered, amen, and pushed his way towards, amen, healing the sick, healing the lame, and raising the dead. Please, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so as he is walking to do his work, praise God, amen, the enemy becomes agitated and irritated because now the enemy is unable, praise God, to stop him because, amen, Jesus has gone beyond, amen, the Pharisees. He's gone beyond, praise God, that which was used to be seen uh, in the synagogue on a Saturday. Can I get some witnesses here? Hallelujah. He's gone beyond them, praise God. And so he's saying, first of all, if you are going to overcome the enemy, praise God, you need to position yourself to put yourself in the seat of hunger.
Hallelujah. He said, you got to become hungry. You got to become desperate. And so he says in Matthew, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Praise God. So Jesus is now speaking to, amen, not a physical appetite, but he's speaking to a spiritual appetite. Praise God. In other words, what is he saying is the thing that you are hungry for most in life, praise God, is what you are going to gravitate take toward hallelujah the thing that you're hungry for most in life is what you're going after praise God the thing that you praise God desire most that's what you're going to seek after and praise God and so this is the reason why church folk only shout and only stay awake when you begin to tell them about the fact that they're going to be blessed tomorrow praise God if you begin to tell them praise God that they, amen God's going to give you more of his word or more of his presence there's no response because why people want to hear there's something that's going to excite them, that's going to make them jiggle, that's going to make them dance. So God says, if you're ever going to grow, if you're ever going to increase, if you're ever going to elevate, if you're ever going to praise God, get to the place of great power, praise God, then it begins with an appetite. It begins with an, a, an appetite. It begins with a level of hunger and a level of thirst, praise God, that can only be filled by the Spirit of God. And so because people are just living for today and not living, praise God, amen, for the things of God, then there, amen, there is a void, amen, in the life of the average Christian. And if you have to come to God for any day more over two days, which is Sunday and one other day, your flesh begin to talk back to you. Praise God, I know I'm not talking to myself. Praise God, because you begin to feel, amen, a sense of weariness and a, a sense, praise God, amen, of tiredness and you feel like, oh, I don't know if it takes all of this because there is no hunger. But to the person who is hungry, praise God, amen, you, you go to find food, you go to find water and you don't stop until you find something. You don't stop until you find something that's going to fill the void in your life. Praise God. And so the problem in the church, amen, is not the absence of God. Praise God. Only it's the absence of appetite. Amen. The absence of hunger. It is the absence, praise God, that, amen, there is not enough desperate people and there's not enough, praise God, hungry people. People are hungry, but the things that you are hungry for praise God is money amen the thing that you're hungry for the most uh, praise God amen is a promotion the thing that most people are hungry for praise God is a husband or a wife so the hunger for some people is there but it's in the wrong place what if what if you got hungry for God what if you got hungry for God what if your hunger for God took you to a place of absolute and total desperation? What if, praise God, you woke up during this revival and left out of this revival feeling an intense, praise God, desire to find God? What if, what if, praise God, God brought you all the way to the Bahamas? Praise God, amen, just to ignite something on the inside of you that you've never seen or felt before. Oh, Jesus. What if, praise God, what if you divorce everything and everybody? And what if, praise God, just for seven, eight days, for eight days, 
days, eight small days out of 365. Praise God. Amen. You decide to put to death everything else and just go after God. What if that's what was in your mind? What if you just made a decision that you was going to shut down social media and shut down texting and shut down? Praise God. Amen. All your friends and pursue God just for eight days. What would your life be like? So God said, I'm looking for those who are hungry. I'm looking for those who are hungry. I'm looking for those who are thirsty. And because those who are hungry and thirsty after righteousness sake shall be filled. So that's the reason why Jesus was so angry with his disciples because now he is in a position where he wants to feed them with something spiritual but they are so hungry and they follow after their flesh and instead of praying they fall asleep. Am I talking to somebody? Instead of praise God being able to stay away and watch and pray. They are, they, all they were concerned concerned about was the fact that they feel fatigued and they feel tired and we've been on this mission for so long and God when do we get to sleep so he asked them can you not watch and pray with me for one hour can you not tarry with me for one hour can you not get yourself, can you not override the fatigue that you're experiencing in your body and pray it with me for one hour? The one hour is not necessarily time he was speaking about, but really what he was speaking into, praise God, amen, was a desire that would take you beyond your mambi pampi prayer of amen, praise God, of repetition and nothing left to say. Your one hour that will take you beyond, praise God, just a whisper. Your one hour that will break you into something that is more powerful, praise God, that will cause heaven to stand still, that will cause Gabriel, praise God, to come uh, uh, with a message that will cause Michael to bring an execution to your problem. Are you hearing me? Uh, he said, are you hungry enough? Uh, are, you, are you desperate enough that you will launch out in me uh, for one hour? So people can pray only for a minute and they can play for hours. People can watch TV for hours. People can praise God, laugh and go to the movie for hours. People can praise God, amen. People can go from one movie to the next. People can, can, can amen, social media hunt from video after video after video. People can do it because, amen, it's the flesh, amen. And the Bible said that the flesh properly prophet is little praise God amen so what is he saying now he says to the disciple okay seeing that sleep is your is your greatest desire go ahead and go to sleep but it's when you sleep uh, that things are troubling you the most uh, am I talking to somebody when you sleep am I uh, please when you sleep When you sleep, that's when your greatest, amen, amen, test comes. When you sleep, praise God, is when, praise God, is your darkest hour. So he said, go on if you want to sleep, go on and sleep. And the Bible said they slept while Jesus prayed. Now, I want to say tonight, if Jesus, praise God, had to pray, amen, before the revival, during the revival, and after the revival, before the test, during the test, and after the test, who are you? People want answers and they want they want deliverance, but they, they don't want to pray for deliverance. They, they want breakthrough, but they don't want to pray. And Jesus was hounding to the disciples that if you're going to ever, praise God, overcome your temptation and your trial and your test, you got to pray. Hallelujah. You got to pray through it. Am I talking to somebody? If you don't pray, the same thing that happened to your grandfather is going to happen to you. The same thing that happened to your father is going to happen to you. The same thing that happened to your mother.
It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to you. So the Bible said in Luke 7 that while Jesus was entering the city, praise God, amen, there was a procession coming out of the city. And what was the procession? Praise God. They were carrying, it was a funeral procession, and they were carrying the corpse, a dead body, praise God, of a young man that had just died a few days ago. And the Bible said, Amen, following the coffin, holding on to the coffin, and the lifeless body of a man laid in the coffin was his mother holding on and saying, My son, my son, my only son. Praise God. And the Bible said that she wept bitterly. Praise God. And when Jesus saw the way the woman was travailing, he said to the priors, stop. And the Bible said they stopped the coffin. Why? Because a woman was travailing. A woman was what? Travailing. And as she was travailing, the Bible said that Jesus asked her, who is this boy? She said, this is my son, my only son, and I am a widow. I want you to understand tonight I'm not preaching about death as in as much as I'm preaching about life. I'm saying the woman is saying that it's a son. It means then that the year before she had just buried her husband. Am I talking to somebody? And so what do you do when, when these are bloodline curses that then visit your house the year before and the year before and now the thing is coming back again. So now her, her husband had died. Her, amen. Her, her, her father-in-law had died. Am I talking to somebody? Everybody in the family died. And now the only person left alive is the son. And the son now is experiencing the same sickness and symptoms that the grandfather experienced and the father experienced. And now in less than 24 hours the boy is dead. Same cycle. Same scenario, same story. So the woman now looks at Jesus and says, this was all I had left to live for. I might as well die. And Jesus, the Bible said, he stops the coffin. And he doesn't only stop it, but he breaks the cycle. In this hour, you don't just need people, praise God, to tell you what your problem is. Am I talking to somebody? You need a prophet. You need an apostle. You need somebody that's going to not just stop the coffin, but you need somebody that's going to break the cycle. Somebody say, I need somebody that's not just going to stop the coffin. I need someone that's going to break the cycle. To break the cycle. I need someone to break the cycle. I want to just ask a question tonight. I'm not going to be long because I know we'll be back tomorrow but I want to ask the question uh, what demonic cycle has the devil amen uh, started in your life uh, what bloodline curse uh, has the devil got going on uh, in your family uh, from generation to generation maybe I'm talking to the wrong people maybe it's the wrong praise God revival but I'm looking for some people that God sent me back on here tonight to talk to See, until you get to the place where you, where you recognize that there is a problem in your family, until you get to the place where you recognize that there's a problem in your bloodline, you're going to keep going on with it. Amen. Denial is okay. But amen, when denial gets to the place of being, amen, chronic, 
here and it gets to the place of being amen deliberate are you here then it means that you got to wake up from your sense of denial and say something is wrong with my baby something is wrong with me am I talking to you tonight it's okay if you want to deny but when things begin to get serious and things begin to get deadly and, and one job and fire you and the next job fire you and the job before that fire you and you on the verge of getting fired again you gotta say hey No marriages are working. Nobody getting married in the family. Your family don't know the last decade you had a wedding. Hey, you had funerals. But you don't know the last day you had a wedding. Am I talking to somebody? You had you had funerals, you had you had hospital visitation, you had wakes and passovers. Hey, am I talking to you? But you don't know the last day. Nobody in the family had a wedding. Nobody get married. Am I talking to somebody? You don't know the last day that anyone in your family chopped the bro. Am I talking to you? Am I talking to you? Am I talking to anybody in this place tonight? <laughs> hey man, a hundred people in the family and you the bear, you the one that barely made it out, barely made it out of college. Then you begin to look around in the family. Something is mentally wrong with everybody. You can understand emotional destabilization, but my God, when everybody look like they got a chip missing, I might think, see, I know you can be in denial. That's where the devil wants you to be, in denial. But then you got to stop. Somebody in this house uh, got to stop the coffin and say, wait a minute, I got to break the cycle. I got to break the cycle. Find somebody tonight. Say, I got to, I got to stop the coffin. I got to stop the coffin. I, I got to stop the coffin. I got to, I got to stop the coffin. I got to stop the coughing. I, I got to stop the coughing. I, I got to stop the coughing. If I can stop the coughing, uh, I can break this cycle. Uh, if I can stop the coughing, uh, I can break the cycle. Uh, if I can get the coughing to stop, uh, I can break the cycle. Uh, oh, if I can only get uh, the coughing to stop. Somebody say, stop the coffin, Lord. Stop the coffin, Lord Jesus. Stop the coffin. Stop the cycle of death in my life. Stop the cycle of destruction in my life. Stop the coffin of mishaps in my life. Stop the coffin of death in the marriages, of divorce in the marriages. Stop the coffin, God, of poverty in my family. Somebody shout, Stop! the coffin and break the cycle sit down sit down he said you gotta get to the place where you understand that what is happening to you praise God is happening because praise God amen something has gone wrong people of God you can deny it amen you can act like it does not exist you can you can even praise God fly to the for this part of the earth to run away from it, praise God. But one thing I understood about uh, bloodline curses, and I understand about bloodline curses and reoccurring patterns, is that no matter where you go, uh, that devil is going to find you. Uh, I wish I was talking to somebody who knew exactly what I was talking about. Uh, I don't care you can move uh, from the east side to the west side, uh, or the west side to the east side, like George Jefferson, uh, you gonna meet that devil uh, waiting on you right there. Am 
Am I talking to anybody? You, you can migrate and you can you can migrate from where you are, from the backside of a wilderness to a mountain top. The demons will follow you and your children right up the mountain. Praise God. Because one thing about cycles, it don't want to let you go. The very word cycle, amen, indicates something that wants to keep going round and around and around and around. I know I'm not preaching to myself only. I know, praise God, that I'm not the only one that I've been there. I know I am not the only one that used to ask God, when God, when is my breakthrough coming? When God, when is it going to be my turnaround? Somebody say, stop the coughing. Please stop the coughing. Break the cycle. Break the cycle from my life. Break the cycle from my mind. Break the cycle, oh Lord. Break the cycle of debt. Break the cycle of poverty. Break the cycle of lack. Break the cycle of failure. Break the cycle of, oh, of repeated problems. Please sit down, please. When you begin to realize that this thing is repeating itself and it's over and over and over and over again and, and you can't seem to get away from it, then you begin to realize now that this thing is just bigger than a problem. Am I talking to somebody? When it keeps coming up and it keeps coming up and no matter what you do, amen, it's like you can't stop it from coming up. It keeps reoccurring. You said on January 1st of this year that this was going to be the best ever. Am I talking to somebody? You said on watch night uh, on cross overnight uh, when you cross over this year you say bye 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 to my trouble uh, bye bye to my pain. You begin to say bye bye to everything but now you almost back to another watch night uh, and you done seen everything uh, all over again uh, that you done said bye bye to. Because your troubles keep popping up, keep reoccurring. So the sad part about it is when people are oblivious to their own situation. The next sad thing is when people are in denial of their situation. In other words, they don't mind just getting by. They don't mind just getting by. They don't mind just, they don't mind. It's all right once I get paid this weekend. See, let me tell you something what getting by is. If, if you only make it enough money, praise God, for you to eat with. Praise God. Amen. That, 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 that. Hey, hey, watch it. Now. Am I talking to somebody? If all you can do is just get paid to eat. Come on, somebody. You, you might as well just go find some bush somewhere and just start farming. Come on, somebody. Because if all you doing is making enough money uh, for you to eat, amen. Uh, amen. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Praise God. That, that ain't prospering to me. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, you, 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 uh, you are one day from poverty, which means if you get a cut pay or a pay cut, uh, you in trouble. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, I don't know where you stay in, and I understand uh, that, amen, you need to stay in the Airbnb. Uh, let that be your word the first time you came uh, but the next time you come uh, you say I got to do better I got to I can't come from a holy church uh, and gotta go back to roach uh, I can't go back. I can't do it no more. I can't do it around these people who, amen, are in their house. Am I talking to somebody in their house? Got to put up with all their foolishness. Come on, somebody. And they're coming from an anointing to crazy stuff. Am I talking to somebody? You, you got to get to the point where you're tired of being sick and tired. Where you're tired of being heartbreak. And you're tired of being let down and let out. Am I talking to somebody? You got to get to the 
place you try to go in from relationship to relationship and they keep breaking your heart somebody say the devil is demonic cycles and so he said if you're going to if you're going to overcome the cycle you got to do something that you never did before you got to you have to ask God for the anointing for the power and the ability to stop it to do what say stop you, 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 you're not tired of it enough because you're still allowing it to keep going on when you can say stop and then do something different he said, he said Jesus stopped the coffin and he broke the cycle of death from over the pool because the boy was the only son of his mother. The problem with I discovered with a lot of people is they got plenty. And when it comes down to this being your last thing, you're willing to weep for it. You're willing to fight for it. But when you got a lot of hope and you got a lot of opportunity, you don't weep and fight for it. The woman was weeping because this was her only son. Am I talking to somebody? In that day to not have a son means you was poor already because you had no one to go to work for you. Am I talking to somebody? So the Bible said Jesus told the boy, wake up. Amen. He said, wake up. And when he awoke him, the Bible said he gave him to his mother. Praise God. Amen. God wants to wake you up. As long as you are sleeping, the devil has an opportunity to sow things in your life uh, slap the person on the side of you that look like they're trying to fall asleep and say wake your brown self up in here he says wake up can't you pray why are you so weak why if prayer is the is the ammunition and prayer is the key that can open any door and if prayer is the ammunition praise God amen to, to fire up every other weapon why are you not praying you are not praying you are not praying because you are so because you are sleeping, Matthew 13 and 25 says, in fact, he said in the book, in the book he said, later on in the Old Testament, he said, a little sleep, a little slumber, Proverbs, a little folding of the hands. So shall your poverty come upon you like an armed man. Just the reason why you are poor. Just the reason why you are sick. Just the reason why you are frustrated because you are sleeping more than you are praying now in Matthew 13 he says now while men are busy sleeping not just physical sleep but sleeping spiritually if you got to the place where you are supposed to be alert and awake and conscious in God the devil will never be able to pull nothing on you because when they bring the food to poison you you will say hey Dealing with. Now the person on the side you say you better wake up. You better wake up. You better wake up. 
Wake up means wake up to the reality of what is. Wake up to what God is doing. Wake up. Come to wake. Wake means is to become conscious, to become aware, to become awake, to become alive. To wake up means, praise God, that I am no longer in a slumber position. Please, you don't need to be an apostle to wake up. You don't need to be a prophet to wake up. I'm speaking about your spiritual power, your spiritual well all, wherewith all am I talking to you, where you run after God so much that all you want is God God in the morning, God in the noon day, God in the midnight waking up now the person inside you say wake up now the person on the next side you say you better wake up, you better wake up you better wake yourself up. Just the hour to wake up. People are going to wait until watch night to try to wake up. To cross over. They're going to be trying to wake up then. But the Bible says, while you are sleeping now. The enemy is sowing seeds. Now, I don't have time to break down, but you know, I told you before, he sowed seeds. What did he sow? The Bible said in Matthew 13 and 25, he sowed tares amongst the wheat, which means that the enemy took advantage of the man while he was sleeping. And he went into his field and he put some things in the field, in the sleep, in the man while he was sleeping. He put something in his thoughts, in his emotion. He put something. Please, I want you to hear me. This is deep. But if you listen, you will get it. Some things were planted in your... I told you with this girl. I asked the demon, when did you enter this girl? He said specifically, I entered her at the age of four. Are you people listening? listening to me, uh, the demon could say uh, the exact year, the exact age, uh, the exact month, the exact day, the exact hour he entered because why? He knew when he entered. He didn't wait till you get a woman. He planned the seed. From he was young. He planted the seed from you were young. Some people he planted the seed from you were in the womb. Some people he planted the seed. That's why the first person break your heart. You feel like you need to fly south. Because now somebody break your heart. So the seed was sown from then. While man slept, the enemy crept in and sowed tears among the wheat. So this seed leads you to the wrong person, some of you. Leads you to the wrong job. Leads you to the wrong place. Leads you to the wrong lover. Are you hearing me? Leads you to the wrong church. Leads you everywhere wrong. Because why? When you are sleeping is the time you are most vulnerable. For an attack. I, I, I. While you are sleeping, you are weak and most vulnerable. And everybody know you to sleep deep. Come on, somebody. You, you sleep so deep that you don't even know. Amen. Somebody then been in your house and, and stole your underwear. Am I talking to somebody? The, the people of God. Eh? I'm just gonna, I'm just a messenger tonight. Eh? I understand if you don't want to be delivered tonight and, and you don't want to do nothing else. Uh, I'm just I'm just to deliver, I'll just deliver the word. Uh, praise God. But God said, tell the church, you gotta wake up. And you got to wake up to prayer. 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 Every time you roll over and you become conscious, you need to pray. Come on somebody, on your way to the bathroom, you need to 
pray. Am I talking to somebody? Hey, come on, somebody. You wake up to change your pillow. You need to pray. Come on, I don't care. You wake up to check the clock. You need to pray. He said, pray without ceasing. Hey, come on, somebody. That means if before or more can you do anything in this world, prayer. So you need to be quickened. Because your problem is so huge. You cannot just enter the strong man house. Luke 11 says, unless you are able and qualified to bind him. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You can already see what he did with you. You saw what he did with your mother and you have a sneaky suspicion that he's after one of your children. Am I talking to somebody? Uh, and you can see the signs are there. The symptoms are there. The signal. I, maybe, I, I think I maybe just came to the wrong church tonight. I, I don't know. Maybe I just... I didn't. See, some of you are in denial. You, you are in denial. You are in a place where you have not come to the reality. That this thing is trying to kill you. So why come to a prophet to be delivered? Why why come to a prophet to deliver you when you know quite well that you're going right back to sleep tomorrow? Am I talking to anybody? Why come to the prophet to cast the devil out uh, when you already know you ain't hungry enough to keep him out? Uh, am I talking to anybody? Why Why do I need to come to a prophet? Uh, praise God to shout out uh, and to break themselves up uh, trying to deliver you when you have no power or might to fight for yourself. So while man is sleeping, while man sleep, the enemy came in and he sowed seeds. He sowed seeds. Why did he sow seeds? Because everybody know that seeds grow. That seeds grow. Seeds grow. Seeds grow. One thing I discovered in my series on the serpent seed is that the seed always grow. Come on, somebody. No mind that it's a snake today. When you look at it again in Revelation, it's a dragon. Seeds grow. People of God, you better hear me in this house. I came by tonight just to tell somebody, amen, get the devil out of your house. Amen, get God in your life. The way to get God in your life uh, is prayer, is prayer, and more prayer, and the word, are you hearing me, uh, eat the word like you eat food, uh, eat the word more than you eat food, uh, am I talking to somebody, uh, can you get so hungry for God, uh, that you say today, uh, if I'm going to eat 20 pounds, uh, a 20 pound burger, I got to eat a 20 pound scripture, I need 20 verses, am I talking to anybody, uh, you got to get to the place where you become so hunger so hungry and thirsty some people are dry very dry that's because their mother dry their father dry everybody in the house dry and when I start talking to them about they look dry they get offended The demons have the whole family on drug and dryness. I don't need to ask you how you're going to look at age 50. I already know you're going to look. I'm looking at your mother. I don't need to ask you how you're going to look at age 75. I know how I'm going to look at age 75. But you, I already know how you're going to look. Prunish. With the wish. 
Dryness. Suctionness. Turbot ish. Hmm? Trigger fish. Yeah, or blowfish. I already know you, Shaki. You just sharp like that. See, you have to come to the place where you become so desperate for God. They will say, my soul long enough to be. Early in the morning will I rise up to seek thee because thou hast been my help. Early in the morning will my soul rise up to seek thee. So it means then he said, as the day, Psalm 42, panted after the water books, so long it my soul. After you, oh Lord, my soul thirsted for thee, my flesh longed for thee, and I dry and thirst. Let the land be dry, let the land be that way, but I gotta be the one longing for you. He said, My tears have been my meat and drink. My tears. I became so broken. And my tears became my meat. I was eating and drinking my tears for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I wanted God so bad, so bad, that I refused to put bread, natural bread to my mouth. I ate my tears. I drink my tears. That's why the first scripture I gave you tonight was from Matthew chapter 5. He said, they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Hunger speaks to an, an appetite, a desire. Shall be filled. Thirst now means that I don't just want Kool-Aid. I, I don't just want a soda pop or something. Thirsty people go after water. Come on, somebody. Thirsty people go after. So he said, as the day is panting after the water books, that's just how my soul is panting after me. My flesh longeth for thee. My soul thirsts for you. In a dry and a thirsty land where there is no water to see your power and your glory as I have seen thee in the in the sanctuary. That's why you came here. You didn't come back to God. You didn't come here, amen, to fellowship with people, to exchange numbers, to get a hookup, uh, which city you live in. Well, even if they didn't tell me that, amen, the prayer wall was open, I was coming to, the, I was going to be on the jitney. I was coming to the prayer wall because I came here. There's something happening in this place. Uh, I don't want to leave without it. I don't want to miss it. People, apostle told you do every kind of conference, every kind of conference. So strategy this and strategy that and how to grow the church this and how to how to grow the church that and how to get your business going and how to how to get this happening. But very, 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 very few churches can boast and say that they have had a conference or a revival that is built on prayer. Am I talking to somebody that's trying to ignite the fire of prayer in you? Very few can say that they have done it. You don't have no problem. All you need is faith in God. You don't have no problem. All you need is to pray. Brother, you mean I don't have no problem? You don't know my problem. 
Are you bet right? I don't know your problem, but God knows your problem. I'm not talking to you. And more than God, you know your problem. You know what's fighting you. You don't need a prophet to tell you this fighting you and that fighting you. And after we didn't prophesy and tell you what's fighting you, then you still go right back to sleep. This is the hour. He says you have to awake thou that sleepest and Christ shall give you light. Awake thou that sleepest Arise from the dead He's now saying this Prophetically because in Luke 7 He is meeting dead people And dead bodies In all in one chapter He meet the woman Amen the girl Amen the Jairus daughter Just before that And another chapter in another book And Jairus daughter had just died He had to go to his house and say Talitha Kumai damsel arise then he met a man the centurion who said that wait a minute Jesus my servant is sick he's home and he's ready to die and Jesus come into all of these death and dying situation now he meets the widow's son at need and the woman's son is already dead so what is God saying tonight either you stop the call and break the cycle or the spirit of debt is going to visit you on your job visit you in your house visit oh come on salabaku everybody looks so serious everybody look like I don't know see let me tell you what I learned about prayer. You will never pray. Never. You with your cute self. And you got to look the part on your job. And you got to wear all your, your makeup and all your jewelry and all your weave and all your everything. You and your problem ain't hit you hard enough yet to try you to this altar. Hmm. When, you, when your problem gets down the best of you, you will understand. You will find a way to say, God, where are you? You won't worry about what people think about you. I'm not talking to somebody. You, you won't worry about how people feel about you. Come on, somebody. The Bible said the woman got on fours and crawled in the dirt towards Jesus. And she never stopped crawling, getting masked by people, getting fussed by people, getting cussed by people. But she was tired of her issue, so she break. Somebody say, "Break me, Jesus! Stop my coughing! Break my cycle!" Desperate people to desperate. Desperate people don't wait for people to die. They don't have time to complain. Even about what nobody else is doing. You are desperate. Desperate people. Don't look around and ask where is the man. The child is, the car is on the child. Our women have done things with their stilettos and their, and their Sally Hansen nails or their, 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 that they would have never done. But to save the child that's stuck under the car, they will lift the whole car. I wish I was talking to some people that was ready to stop the coughing and break the cycle. You don't have time to complain about what nobody else is doing. You don't have time to complain about the fact that nobody else is coming. Uh, you even ain't worrying about your tiredness. Uh, hey, I heard a man said the other day, he said when Hurricane Dorian hit him, uh, God gave us a word and told him, uh, you need to come to Nassau. Uh, so he left the island where he was. Uh, he went to Abaco because, amen, somebody offered him something in Abaco, not knowing that if he had obeyed God uh, and come here, praise God, uh, that we had already checked on something for him. Uh, 
Watch this now. So he is caught in the middle of the storm in Abacoa. And he said for almost 24 hours, he was swimming in waters. Where he was on, he thought he was in his yard in the place where he was staying, only to discover that the waves was over his head, over 25, 30 feet. And he said the sad thing is he couldn't swim. But that day he learned how to swim for over 24 hours. He saw sharks swim by him and eat people. He saw a dead body pass float past him. Hmm. He said, I never prayed so much in all my days. Why wait for trouble to pray? when you can build an altar of prayer right now. <laughs> Why wait for calamity to pray when you can build an altar? You can build an altar. You can build an altar. You can. Why don't you just, prophetess, if you just gave away all the altars for free, then we will pray. Yeah, right. No, it's there because it's got to be where you desire or you become desperate enough for it uh, that you don't care what come on somebody you are willing to make a sacrifice uh, you see now uh, yes salvation is free uh, but the anointing uh, it will cost you something it will cost you uh, come on somebody uh, salvation is free uh, but the anointing will cost you something uh, you got to sacrifice uh, there's got to be uh, some level uh, of sacrifice don't just become powerful a general never becomes a general and he was MIA during the whole war <laughs> and then after the war is over he shows up no sir no huh Come on, you army people. He has to have to wear marks in his body. Am I talking to somebody? There's something he became the general. Because when the, even when the war was over, there's a report. Hey, come on, somebody, Commodore, that this soldier went beyond the enemy's line. Come on, somebody, just to reserve and preserve the American flag. Come on, somebody, there's got to be somebody to have seen you fire on the enemy and came back out wounded, bruised. Come on. All the planes flying this way towards the enemy and your little plane flying back that way. Never be a general. You'll never be a five star. Hey, those people who are generals, they have his story. They have what? His story. It doesn't matter how much jobs you've been on, but the fact of the matter is you have history. You overcame something. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you don't just get the royal star or, or the, the little thing when they escape. What it is again? Uh, 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 yeah, the little honor heart, whatever. You don't just get that praise God, uh, amen, because you, you, <laughs> you, 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 you came back home alive. No, 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 no. You got to save Ryan. Come on, somebody. Uh, you got to be one of the people uh, that was a part of the group uh, that was saving Private Ryan. <laughs> you got to be a part of the battalion. 
So now, Christians, you gotta be prepared to pray. As I close, you gotta be prepared to go beyond the enemy's line. I thank God that some of you got enough sense that when you sense that something is wrong, see, 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 you, you, you don't know, praise God, that when your time of deliverance has come because you, you somebody testified and said, and they was just minding their own business and then somebody was watching this video and they say, what well, that is? And as soon as they saw the video, something turned on the inside of them and they knew it wasn't gas. Come on, somebody. You, 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 you gotta be to the point where, where you know no, praise God. That's me right there. That's me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I got to go. I got to leave. I need some days off. The woman said, they couldn't give me, they didn't want to give me no days off. Listen to this. She said, they didn't want to give me any time off. She said, but I knew that my deliverance, if I did not come to be delivered, the enemy was going to kill me. I said, Mama, what did you do? She said, I resigned. I said, oh. She said, yeah. I, I don't, I need my deliverance. <laughs> All right, see, you see how you people are clapping? Look at you. You are thinking about her right now. You're wondering which fool is that? Is a good fool. Come on, somebody. Because I prefer to move and run rather than stay there and let those witches kill me. I, I ref Come on, somebody. I prefer to get somewhere and shout mayday, mayday, mayday. Breaker, breaker. One, two, three. Officer in trouble. You didn't lose one engine. And you still trying to stay right there. No. With your one engine. Come on somebody. That's why when the woman. Heard that her boy had died. The Shunanite woman from Shusha. And the Bible said. The husband said. What's wrong with the boy. What's wrong? What happened? Why you? It's not the Sabbath day in the book of Kings, second king. He for, he's for uh, first king. He said, second kings, he said, it's not the Sabbath day, neither is it the new moon. Where you going? He, she said, don't worry about it. And she said, he said, baby, listen, listen, don't play with me, baby. Where's the boy? She said, he all right. Hey, the husband said, well, where, where is he? No, just stay right over there, Frederick. You keep on right there. Plum. Come on, keep digging in there. Use your grandpa. I'm coming right back. The Bible said the woman saddled the ass and threw the dead boy body on the back of the ass. Come on, somebody on the back of the chariot and cover him up. The husband said, where's the boy? She said, it is well. Oh, Jesus. I'm not talking to anybody tonight. She said, I'm going to the prophet. Oh, somebody make a noise in this Somebody lift your voice in here. I say lift your voice. Lift your voice. Let a cry come out of your mouth. Let a cry come out. It is well. I'm going to the prophet. I got to stop the coffin and break the cycle of death. Open your mouth and cry. 